بدأ صح؟ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقية ولا محرومة اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها أعوذ بالله السميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى The most compassion, the most merciful All praise and thanks are due to him And peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, session 42. 41, sorry. Session 41. Eid Mubarak. Last week, uh, it was the uh, occasion of the Eid, so we did not attend the class. What I'm planning to do... Today, as always, inshallah, I will make very quick summary for the most important titles of last time, about seven to 10 minutes. Then we will be tackling one or two major points. Last time we finished highlighting the concept of al ain or the evil eye as sometimes call it in English. Before that, we covered the concept of al-hasad, envy. Before that, we, the, the, we, we covered the concept of al-sihr, magic. So, to the best of my knowledge, inshallah, in what pertains with the level that is needed to go in the verse 102, which is وَمَا هُمْ بِضَرِّنَ بِأَحْدِنَ مِنَا and the whole story of Harut, Marut, Sulaiman السلام, and the relation, the children of Israel, Accusing Sulaiman at that time with that context. Okay? Today, inshallah, uh, we will be highlighting the concept of Wama Hum Bidarina Bihim in Ahadin Illa Bi Ibnillah. We will highlight the concept of Addarar to harm someone. Harming. Okay? Illa Bi Ibnillah. So we have two main major concepts today. Addarar wa Ibnullah. Now Harm. How does it happen? What's the relation between being harmed and the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Illa bi The whole idea, this comes under the main umbrella of al-qada' wal qadr Fate, destiny, predestination, the whole law. So I will be highlighting the main law so that inshallah, while you are thinking about magic, envy, I, it should be under this big umbrella. <laughs> because if you understand everything as bits and pieces separated here and there, without realizing that they are part of a big system, <laughs> like sometimes, when you, for example, computer contains a very complicated software. Actually, the software, the computer, is a system. <laughs> you have a lot of things. They work together. You have hardware. You have hardware. It has to do with, you know, connections. When you command something, this is related to something else. So, all together, sometimes, when you press something so that your enter or print to be translated into hard copy paper, this goes through a long operation of systems. At any moment, something disconnected, nothing will happen. True or false? For example, for example, this is my laptop. This is my software. It's connected in a very complicated way through the Wi-Fi with my internet. Very simple operation. I want a hard copy from my document. Is it complicated? If the Wi-Fi is not on, <laughs> Keep pressing enter, 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 pretty, you know. There is one missed item. The Wi-Fi is not on. This is part of the system. So that's why some people, they keep, يا عمي أقسم بالله أني بدعو. Why Allah is not responding to me? 
Sheikh, why Allah is punishing me? Wait, wait, wait. Who told you that Allah is punishing you? Look, I'm harmed. Uh, you don't understand the big system. <laughs> Good my point? So this is what we will do today, inshallah. Let's go back to the quick summary. The last thing we said, it is proved according to the text. Hadith is Sahih. قال, uh, that Al-Ain is something confirmed in our Sharia, in our Deen. قال, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Last time we highlighted that the concept of I is confirmed. The reality of what, how is not realized or known. So be careful. There is nothing in the Sharia to tell you there is an X-ray, IR, Bluetooth, infrared, or whatever. We have no idea. The only thing that is proved al haq type. The only way of, as a solution is, ruqya and protection by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does it happen? We have no idea. <laughs> what should we do? Simply, what? Protect yourself with adhkar and ruqya. Period. Period. <laughs> That's it. This is the whole summary of the whole idea. Don't waste your time with any kind of legends or myths or some people. Wallahi, I think وجدتي حكت لي وخالت عمة أم ست عمة ستي قالت لي you know, you know, you know, forget it. We are شارع. This is علم غيب. This is part of the unseen. عين حق. Okay. What is it? We have no idea. How does it work? We have no idea. There are some indications with some kind of weak hadith. Be careful. When I say weak, it's not like fabricated. Say صحيح, حسن, ضعيف. Then we have موضوع. موضوع fabricated, which means a lie. Garbage, okay? ضعيف, weak. There is a possibility. Weak possibility that it might be said by Prophet Muhammad So, so don't, don't mix between da'if and mawdu'r, okay? Be careful. So, there is some kind of da'if ahadith with some kind of dispute between the ulama that hadith said, قال, you, and we, you know, عين, last time we said, it's exactly when you admire something, when you like something. قال, إذا أعجب المرء بشيء, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Ask us to do what? To say Tabarakallah, MashaAllah, to mention Allah. At this point, when we see something without mentioning Allah, something might happen as a harm. We don't know why, how, when. One of the weak indications, weak indications, not it's a, the only explanation, قال يحضر الشيطان. <laughs> At that specific point, the shaitan could have some kind of access to do some harm. How? We have no idea. Let me just simplify this concept in my words. I'm not saying that this is the explanation, be careful. I'm giving you a simple example from our daily basis life so that you can relate to understand my words, okay? Now, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Do we catch cold? نَزْلَتْ برد. Do we catch cold? فَجَّا بِكُونْ You have nothing to do. Just فجأة, you have نَزْلَتْ برد. okay? What do we say? I caught a cold type. Scientifically, you know and I know it's became part of our ilm that viruses basically they are spread everywhere. Actually, I am you, I, we are breathing viruses now through the oxygen, true or false. So viruses, when I catch cold, it's not that the virus was not there and it comes. No, it's already there. Now, every one of us, according to the science, on our palms, we have millions of viruses. In our throats, we have millions of viruses. True or false? Type. Why I'm not suffering from anything? Virus is weak. Make the analogy now. Now, in our terminology as an Arab, we say, we say, bird. We say, lafha. And always, when you catch a cold, it happens when you move from big gap of temperatures for example you are in a very hot temperature inside house when you go outside it's very cold that's why if you see many main gates they have this kind of 
you know, system of very, very hot, you know, air, it comes just to give you this kind of, you know, sometimes to prevent this air to go outside or from outside to come, the differences. Many people, they have this kind of small spaces. They ask you to wait there for a second or a moment, just your body to be accustomed for the temperature. What happens now? To the best of my simple, humble knowledge, when you move from a very big difference in temperatures, your immune system might be affected for a while. <laughs> Seconds. Your immune system. When you go from very hot, very cold, just like a chalk for the immune system, in this very few seconds of, of weakness of your immune system, your viruses will be activated. In one second, they will start working against your throat and you, you will catch a cold. <laughs> so please make the analogy. The viruses are already there. <laughs> you did not bring them, they are there. But they have no power to influence you. Jazakallahu khairan. Shukran jazeem. Thank you. Thank you very much, sister. Barakallahu fikum. Shukran. Allah on time, sahih. Jazakallahu khairan. Are you with me? So look now. Viruses are there. No power to do any harm. In a weakness point of seconds, they will be activated. So, the idea scientifically now, whenever I have weakness times, viruses will work against me. If I do not have weakness times, viruses will still there, but have no power to influence me. Let's make the analogy now. <laughs> Evil eye. I'm not saying this is an explanation. I'm giving you an idea how could it be work as a concept, okay? Now, I'm looking at something. I do not mention Allah. The person does not care with mentioning Allah. So I and the person, one of us or two of us, like a magnetic to bring the shayateen. <laughs> Anything could happen, so it coincidentally, whatever could be harming. What's the point? Be careful about your immune system. What is our spiritual immune system? Adhkar. <laughs> Trust. Believing in Allah. Mentioning Allah. <laughs> Being close from Allah. Ututa tuta. What? Khilsat? Hatuta. This is the whole story. Is it complicated? This is what we have done last time. I'm not explaining now. I'm just reminding you. So we close the file, inshallah, of the whole idea of sihr, magic, and I by this, bi'ithn al-Mawla, azza wa jal. Okay. Today, alhamdulillah, now we have the concept of, as we said, وَمَا هُمْ بِضَرِّنَا بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Time. Now, to understand the harm or the thing, a darar, which could, for some people, might be classified as bad, negative, evil, <laughs> unwanted thing, whatever. Um, relatively speaking, what could be bad for you might not be bad for others. And now, let's understand the big umbrella, the whole idea of Allah's fate and how things might be happening to us in terms of good and bad. One of the major ideas, biggest, the biggest rule, الذي خلق الموت والحياة for what? ليبلوكم. This is the biggest umbrella. Inside it, we have many it's like big system, we have many applications. <laughs> okay, inside the system. <laughs> so the big, big, big one, خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ He is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created life and death to test you. So keep always in your mind that we are in a continuous test. 
pipe. Number two, this test consists of both what we classify as good and bad. We classify, but not, not necessarily it is good or bad as I think in every specific case. What is the evidence for that? وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna. So, we are in a test. This test, Allah is stating that this bala will be with khair and shar, with good and evil, with bad and good, with harm and nice, whatever. Use all terminology of negative and positive. <laughs> all of them. Okay? Allah will be testing us after telling us that we are on a test, will be in good and bad. Okay? Type. What is one of the biggest reasons for this test? Allah states clearly, قال فتنة. <laughs> the meaning of fitna in this ayah, according to Arabic lexicons, فتنة يفتن فتنة, the original lexicons in Arabic language means الفتن, when we use the pieces of gold, they are mixed with filthy, dirty things in the ground, such as dust, soil, rocks, they are mixed. The people, when they want to extract the gold, they do what? They bring this mixture of gold, soil, dust, rocks, pieces all together. Because sometimes gold, not big pieces, they are in what? Very, very small, tiny pieces, mixed. So they bring this mixture, they expose it to very, very, very high temperature. 700, 800, 1000 degrees. Now, gold will be what? Melted. <laughs> Rocks, soils, they need, I think, maybe two or 3000. So the gold immediately will be extracted, gold, out of all filthy other things. This operation in Arabic language called what? Al-Fatnu. So look to the metaphor now. Look to the idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, we will test you for the sake of applying the concept of Fatn against you. It's as if, in my simple words, Allah is telling us, all oh, my people, I will keep exposing you to a very, 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 some kind of big test and difficulties like the fire against the mixture of filthy, dirty things with gold. So that the gold inside you will be extracted from every filthy, dirty other things. So harmful, difficult, hardship, they are designed in the system to cleanse me. It's like me when going to have a shower, hot shower, after having a very tough, difficult sport. Sweat, bad smell, I just want what? Hot shower. <laughs> the high temperature cleanses, <laughs> cleans, removes. Are you with me? So this is, or like when doing very tough sports, I'm getting rid of... <laughs> A lot of things through my skin. I'm suffering. <laughs> I'm struggling. We call it sport, but actually I'm struggling. <laughs> What's this? We call it sport, but actually I'm what? I'm doing a big, big, big effort. Because <laughs> I want to, to achieve something else. <laughs> so anyway, so number one, to test you. Two, Fitna. We know we'll be tested with this and this for the sake of fitna. Type. Now, in light of this big two things, let's come to the idea of qada and qadar within. And by the way, today I will do my best to finish my talk to open the discussion for you because I know that you will have tens of questions about what I'm saying because in your daily life. Because today, we are concluding the whole idea of harm within Sihr, but it covers many other aspects of our lives. Tayyib, Darar. Now, within this system, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the following. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the Quran and to the hadith of Sahih, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything, true or false? Type. It's not just he knows, he knows in advance. True or false? Yani. In advance, in our terminology as limited human being, before the thing happens in our time, Allah knows that it will happen. True or false? It's not just he knows, actually it is written. <laughs> written means documented. Some people, they have a misconception for this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And everything is written in the preserved tablet. Some people, they translate the concept of maktub in their minds as they are forced to do it. No. Maktub means Allah knows the following. He knows everything. But another pause. I need to explain another subtitle now. Try to imagine with me because I have a lot of subtitles then i will conclude them and i will portray the full image together again inshallah طيب. our lives generally in a very general sense divided into two main areas i explained this many times here but i will do it again because i know for sure some people they did not listen to this our lives in terms of our will and the free will in pertains to allah's will يعني إرادة الله Allah compared with our irada, our lives divided into two main areas. First area, we are forced to do things and we have no option, such as the time of our birth, our parents, our gender. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not my decision if Allah decided to let me be created in 17th century or 19th century or 20th Is it my decision? Type. Have I chosen my mother and my father? Has anyone of you, by the way? Seriously, I'm asking. Any consultation before you come? Any catalog to choose your father, your mother? Has anyone of us chosen the place? Would you like to be a Palestinian or Jordanian? For example, mm, no, no, Lebanese. No, 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 none of us, none of us had this option at all. So just, we are, we are here, you discover that you are a male or a female, you discover that you are the son of Muhammad or Ali or uh, uh, Abbas or Abla or Fatima or whatever, no option. Is this part of our lives or not? One of the biggest honors to be from Gaza, صح? حياك الله بعبد الله. غزة العزة. Seriously? is this part of our lives or not? طب are we forced or not? By the way, do we have the option to choose or not? طيب. Simple logic. There is no accountability for anything you have no choice in. Yes, 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 we are forced to do things. There is no accountability for the fact that your father is Muhammad or Ali or Abdullah or Abbas. Nukta. That's it. Allah will not hold you accountable why you were born in Saudi Arabia or in Palestine. No, no, no. There is no accountability for that. The accountability starts when you became mature, having full awareness and ilm, regardless where do you live, depending on the knowledge that you have about your actions and your intentions. Before that, there is no accountability. So this is part of Al-Qadr. Be careful, I'm trying to explain to you what? Qada Al-Qadr. The other part of our lives is what? Where we have the choice, the freedom within the big, the big umbrella of the faith of Allah. Let me make it very simple. Now, Generally speaking, do I have now the choice to drink this coffee or not? Do I have? Type. I'm thinking now, if I'm, God forbid, but just to make it complete example, if I'm not drunk now and I don't have any kind of drugs, do you think I'm drunk or I have drugs now? 
Uh, do I look like someone? <laughs> okay. If I have the full power of intellect and the reasoning is completely working with me and I have knowledge, if I know that in theory, coffee is prohibited in Islam, I will be doing what? Haram. If in theory, just a theoretical example. If drinking coffee is haram and I know this is coffee and I'm fully aware of what I'm doing and I'm drinking the coffee, which is hypothetically, theoretically, is haram in Islam. I'm doing now what? Haram. So I have the free will to do it. I have the knowledge. So I have the option to do it. And to say, Astaghfirullah al Oh Allah, forgive me. This is called repentance. And I have the option about to do it. Ya hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. How come I'm doing this? Ya Allah, forgive me. I will be rewarded for the fact that I was about to do it and I did not do it. Okay? Now, and I have the option to drink, for example, this haram thing, supposedly. I was going there to do it. Then I changed my mind completely. And I have this very dangerous status. I was going to do the haram, fully determined, passed away. I, my, my, my record will be sealed with, I've done it, even though I did not touch it, because I was fully determined to do it. By the other side of the coin, the beautiful one, we have poor needy people here. I was collecting the money to help them, okay? I was planning to collect the money. So I took 10 days off from my work to go for 10 days just collecting money to help this group of needy people. I just woke up in the morning, I started the engine, passed away. In my record will be as if I've done 10 days of collecting money and helped all the poor needy people. So it's pros and cons for you and you. You were about to do the haram and Allah stopped you. You were about to do the nice good things and Allah stopped you. This is part of the free what? Will and accountability. Is this part of our life as a common sense or not? This is the part that we have what? The accountability. In this part, we have the concept of trial. <laughs> Okay, it's mixed. Zakallah khaila still. Allah ikram. Tabah, it's not haram. Okay, but just okay. I'm not just in case. I'm just a theoretical example. Zakallah khair. Barakallah fiq. Bukburikt. Imagine if someone was not paying attention for whatever. Try to picture the following possible example. Someone was focusing on his mobile. He did not notice that I'm making. Theoretical example. Then out of a sudden, he started focusing. I'm saying, for I'm drinking haram coffee. Saying, look, Sheikh, hasbi Allah al Sheikh. Hatta al Gahwa kut harmuha. It happens, by the way. And you go, Wallahi, I saw a Sheikh in Oakville. He's he's giving a fatwa that uh, coffee is haram. Hasbi Allah al Sheikh. Wallahi, the whole Muslims in Canada will not convince him that he is wrong. Because he will not admit that he was paying attention to his mobile. <laughs> <laughs> he will not accuse himself that he was not paying attention. <laughs> so be careful. Qahwa is not haram, okay? It's just a theoretical example, okay? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Actually, I love Qahwa. And I ask Allah not to be deprived from coffee in the Jannah, inshallah. <laughs> Wallahi, I love it very much. <laughs> No, Masalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. By the way, you remember, you are all invited where? Inshallah, Inshallah, to my palace in the Jannah. If we all go to the Jannah, first invitation. And the honor, the two honorary, two guests will be Umar al-Khattab and Aisha radiallahu anhumma. This is part of the thing that I ask Allah, Inshallah, to, to, inshallah, ya Allah, to, to, to honor me if I became the people of the Jannah. You are all invited, Inshallah. Okay? As long as we mention the Jannah, Inshallah, bi'idhillah. Tayyip. So, liyabluwakum, nabluwakum al-shari wal-khayri, fitna, qada wa qadar, we are forced from certain things, and it's written, 
and we have an option to do many things Allah knows in advance what we will do and what will happen to us by others here comes part of qada, qadar harm darar <laughs> are you with me still can you relate to what i'm doing so far طيب. طيب. other rules and other ayat and other hadith tell us what exactly about now the possibilities of what could be happening in terms of the darar in light of bala in light of al fitna of good and bad in light of the option to do or not to do one of the possibilities of why allah permitted and gave the permission for this harm to happen to me answer number one the general general umbrella of imtihan how do you deal with what i as your lord has decided to test you your reaction <laughs> i've told you that you will be tested and i'll put some difficulties and i gave you the law how to deal with them show me to what degree you respect my guidelines it's like a soldier in the training you were asked you were fully equipped with all kind of tools you were asked to follow what rules they asked you if you were suspecting some kind of possible threat don't ever shoot until you what give a warning you have a very dangerous killing machine called machine gun <laughs> you are a soldier your work is to protect the country yes however a mistake could happen at any moment when you hear while you are guarding the borders the fact that you heard something you have no right just to keep killing because anything by mistake could be passing by the rule says give a warning so i heard something i'm doing a very high sacred job i heard something i'm a soldier i heard something i said who's there no reply moving at night who's there no reply third time no reply shoot after i did it i we we as an army discovered that it was an innocent person is it my fault no i've done i followed the rules even though i harmed that person but i'm not a sinful person because i followed what yes got my point type now I have the power. I'm tested now. Type next time. Simply I'm so lazy. I don't care with following the rules. I hear someone. I misuse the power. Ta -ta 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 I'm a criminal now. <laughs> I'm a criminal now. You know the rule? It's part of your test. Yalla, tfaddal. For the trial. <laughs> and you have, you know, see, I'm just making things simple. This is fair reason. Type. According to the law of Allah, taking in consideration tens of verses and tens of hadith, second possibility. Second possibility. I'm a half, half, good, nice, bad person. I'm not that good, but still I have some kind of goodness in my heart. I know haqq and batil, I know right and wrong, but I'm not that person who cares a lot about what Allah wants part of the law which be could be classified as harm is punishment yani in our jordanian language garsat idhn wa bil masri arsat widan bil suri nafsa it harms by the way does it harm but it what it gives a warning <laughs> are you it gives what a warning so it's punishment sometimes is it possible that a magician dealing with jinn or an evil eye could harm me yes why allah allowed this 
simply because I decided not to use the protection of high divine genuine antivirus of Allah. <laughs> I decided to depend on something else. I decided just to depend on the CCTV cameras with the best protection plan with Rogers and Bills and Virgin and Telus and something. خلاص, I'm fully protected. يا عمي على قل سعود بسات يا الله جنة خلاص. I have the best protection plan. I have the best insurance. يا عمي the best insurance ultimately is with Allah. Take in consideration the means أخذ بالأسباب. But at the end we have توكل and تواكل. So this is second possibility. Why Allah allow? Because my point is وما هم بضرين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله. طب why this happens? This is another possibility. I am punished by Allah. Uncover. Allah removes the by default protection. ولله المثل الأعلى. طيب. Third possibility of being harmed. ولله المثل الأعلى. In our simple words. Sometimes. I'm a, I used to be far from Allah. I did some kind of sins and mistakes, but I'm now struggling in the path of becoming closer to Allah. But however, I have already done a lot of bad things. So I have a debt in my account. <laughs> so I decided to repent. Part of the cleansing system in Allah's law is Takfir. Takfir is the noob. You know Takfir is the noob? Part of it that I might be put into big trials to be cleansed for what I have done. By the way, there is a difference between uquba and takfir now. Now, punishment is not necessarily takfir the noob. Be careful. Now, punishment could be used later as a means of becoming close to Allah if I accepted the fact that Allah is punishing me to bring me back. If I rejected, punishment will be an extra big burden against me because I have not accepted the warning. Now, when it becomes takfir, cleansing for my sins, when Allah puts me in the difficulty and the harm, and I say, Allahumma lak alhamd, I'm very sorry, Allah, for what I have done. I accept everything you do against me because I deserve it. Submission. By this, now I have in my debt a lot of burden. It's well, now what? Cleanse, cleansing, 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 cleansing. Okay? Third, fourth, fifth option, whatever. You know the upgrading system? You are working, you, for example, you are in a grade 10. You want to go to grade 11. Grade 11, you want to be upgraded to grade 12. You take more difficult exams or less difficult? Yes. Type between BA and MA, you take more difficult or less? Normal sports person working in his local area, he wanted to become a world championship. He will be facing more challenges or less? Type. Fourth option, it's an, a divine upgrading system if you want to go there. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Someone would like to be classified in the sight of Allah with the Sahaba. Can you imagine? Do you think that level, if I want to be like the Sahaba in the sight of Allah in terms of the Ajr, do you think I will pay a normal price or a very big high price? Very big high price. <laughs> very big. So sometimes part of the difficulties that will be allowed to come against me is a training course to uplift me. It's exactly like special forces. Special forces in the army, they go to what? Very difficult, very difficult real genuine cases in training they will be thrown out of honoring them they are the special forces SWAT teams they will be thrown into real real areas of very difficulties dangerous 
just to prove really that you are the people of honor. True or false? Wallillahi al-mathal al-a'la. So, when you put all of these possibilities, it's either to just the general idea of testing you <laughs> of how to deal, or uplifting you, or cleansing your past, or punishing you. And by the way, punishing, by, by the way, it's a punishment, it comes. Once I receive it, I have the option to turn punishment into, to, into to mercy or into disaster. When the punishment comes, Allahumma ghfirli, Ya Rabbi Asif. Punishment will be what? A tool of mercy. As long as I have not passed away. And by the way, this is not my opinion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Min hafz al-Quran, Surah Al-An'am, 45, 46. The beginning. Min hafz al-Surah, I think. Azzaqallah khair. Barakallah fiqh. Wa laqad arsalna ila umamim min qablika fa'akhaznahum bil ba'sa'i wadzarra'i la'allahum yatadarra'un. We have sent to many nations before you, O Muhammad. Many nations for you. It's a law. It's, it, it's a law of the universe. O Muhammad, we have sent to many nations before you and we have tested them, أخذناهم. we put them under بأساء and الراء. Very difficult hardships, very difficult challenges. لعلهم يتضرعون So that they might beg us to forgive them and to come closer to us. So one of the main reasons of the hardship is what? To bring you to come to Allah. So if you accepted this, Alhamdulillah, you, by the way, it's your decision. Now, it's an, a punishment is like a neutral item. It's, it's classified as punishment. You have a button by turning it to change it to a mercy. <laughs> or otherwise it will continue as a punishment. Okay? Now, in light of this, we understand the following. Let's go to the ayah again now. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ They followed what the shayateen they were reciting and spreading and telling at the time of Sulaiman. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ Sulaiman did not commit kufr. وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا But the shayateen they committed the kufr. يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ they were teaching them this. We know that's a knowledge. It's a ilm. قال وعلموا الناس السحر plus وما and the thing that was revealed to Harut and Marut. We say that Harut and Marut they came to teach something and one of the good explanation for that they were teaching them how to protect themselves from the sihr. However, they misused this knowledge with the sihr and to do harm and bad things. قال وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقول إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر. They were not teaching anyone this powerful science how protect, but don't misuse it. If you remember, like if for example you are in a police department, you will be taught how to use tens of difficult, different, very dangerous weapons. So you became experts how. To use all different weapons. Now, if you just been left to do whatever you want, how harmful you could be. <laughs> you will be like a, you, you know, k k killing machine. Because you can use very dangerous weapons, others they can't. But you can easily do it. <laughs> so, we say warning. That's why you are not allowed to do many things. You are not allowed to hold with you something. You have to sign. You have to be tested when you go through this cleaning machine and many things because of very dangerous things under your control. True or false? Don't commit kufr. This leads you to the kufr. Then, they do it. To harm the people. One of the examples how to split, how to make separation, how to destroy the relation between husbands and wife. One of the most famous things that they do it. 
Now, وَمَا هُمْ بِضَرِّنَا It's like, be careful. Whatever I have explained to you, from any kind of possibilities, whether it's sihr, whether it's jinn, whether it's shayateen, whether, and we added for your knowledge, this hasad and the ayn, وَمَا هُمْ بِضَرِّنَا they will not be able to harm anyone by any way except by the permission of Allah. The main idea, nothing will happen but by the knowledge and the permission of Allah. You are under the big will of Allah. So nothing is, you are not living in a chaos. You are not in a missed uh, universe. No, 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 no. So from one angle, have the tranquility and peace of mind. From another angle, Follow the rules how to protect yourself from this possible danger. Does it make sense? Clear? Type. Today I finished this point. Zakallah khair. MashaAllah alaykum. Rahib al akhwah. Ah, Allah. Pan coffee is not haram, okay? Zakallah khair. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Taib. Today, I will stop by this, inshallah. Because we have a... Taban, okay, sorry, I forget one concept. It's not a basic part of my talk, but I think if I repeat it, it will help. It's just marginal. You know, when I mentioned, because I felt that there is a good benefit of this example. I finished my... my, my so, prepare your questions, because we have about 20 minutes. But just let me add to your information the concept of uh, how can we understand the fact that Allah knows in advance what I will be doing and it's written even though it's my free will. <laughs> Got this point? Many people have many questions about this. Type, Ya Sheikh, it's written. Please change the word written into documented and recorded. Change it in your mind. Don't translate it like written. Just write what? documented <laughs> okay in a very simple way now the example that i use now we have in our when we studied this kind of sciences ilm al or something al qada wal qadar one of the things that our mashayikh our ulama taught us qal ilmullah in what pertains the knowledge of allah and what pertains to my free will is kashif ghair muathir it reveals it uncovers but it does not influence my will to understand this, you need to, know, you need to know the following. Please fix it in your mind. Don't compare your knowledge with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is beyond our understanding and Allah beyond all kind of limitations and boundaries such as time and place. Allah created time and place. We are part of time and place. So you and me cannot Think even with our imagination, but within the limitations of time and place. So when we say Allah knows before, immediately we think that Allah is limited with the concept of past, present, future, which is not. But how? We don't know. Because Allah is ليس كمثله شيء. There's nothing like him. But the concept of time, because the whole idea of Qadr is related to the concept of time. Because we say future is what? Time. What we know as a future is not future for Allah. <laughs> for you and me it's future. But <laughs> how? have no idea. One of the amazing indications about this, by the way, 99% of verses in the Quran that talk about the day of judgment, Allah is using the past tense. Do you know this? Past. Allah is using past. وَقَالُوا يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِي عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكُ قَالُوا وَهُمْ فِيهَا قَالُوا But did that happen yet? When come قَالُوا You know, they said, they said, how come they, no, no, logically in our words, we should, it should say what? They will say, they will. No, 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 no. They have said. What is this? It's an indication from Allah to tell you, as if Allah said, hey, for you it's a future. <laughs> for me, everything is known from now. But it's not your business. It's Allah's business. Don't interfere in something that you have not to do. But Allah is telling you. <laughs> you just work with the area that <laughs> you work. Allah knows. 
Allah knows. How? I have no idea. But his knowledge does not influence your free will. This is my point. I will give you this example. And I, I'm using this example since about 27 years. And alhamdulillah, I found it very helpful. I need someone to give me his mobile. Oh, can I just please? I will, I will not use it. I just just hold it. Zakallah khair. Look, basically, the idea. I'm a very visual person and would love always to visualize the concepts. You will remember it. To understand this point, and I, I, I conclude my talk with it, let's imagine that I, myself, have the time machine. You understand what I mean time machine because you watch the scientific movie fictions, scientific fictions, you know, okay? So this is my space time machine. And I have a very, very exceptional device in this device. This device records image, video, emotions, smells, intentions. <laughs> this device. And this is what time? Machine. Brother Naim, I will apply on you, Malish. Now, let's imagine that Brother Naim is 40 now. So I use the time machine to now we are in the year 2051. So Naim is 72 years. So I'm there. I am I am I'm invisible person with my time machine and my device there 2051 Naeem is there now in the age of 72 I'm there through the time machine able to record image video movements smells intentions everything so I was there and I recorded Naeem for about 10 terabytes of what he's doing uh, in some certain things. Recorded, then I put the reverse. I return back now here. So by traveling through the time, I captured, but this is impossible for me, okay? I'm just making simple to you. I captured from the future what Naeem was doing there. Look was doing there. I have it here. Now I'm sitting here with Naeem. He's 40 now. I have here what he will do. Everything's recorded. Naeem has no idea about my existence. He has no idea about this device. However, I have it. I hold it. Is there any relation between my existence now Holding all of this knowledge and Naeem? No. This is the Ilm of Allah. Lillahi al al ala. This is the, just the, the idea of Kashif Ghair Mu'athir, which means it reveals, it uncovers, but it does not affect. So, well, by the way, it's not 100% like this. Because actually, we are talking about something we don't comprehend in reality. But I'm trying just to make it somehow, you know, simple to grasp as limited human beings. So when we say, Ya Ammi, Allah katab, Allah katab, Ya Habib, Ya Habib, Allah katab. Allah knows in His way, He put it there in a simple way. It has nothing to do with your free will. Work, do your task. Don't busy yourself with anything has nothing to do with your job, please. Because many people they kept saying, he told me if Allah knows why. Don't let the shaitan play this dirty game with you. Yes, it's not your business, simply. As long as you know that you have the free will and you will be held accountable for what you have a free will in. Apart from that, there's no accountability. Khalas, where's the problem? Where is the problem? There should be no problem unless if I want to create a problem to take it as an excuse. Clear? By this, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, inshallah, sihr, shayateen, envy, hasad, evil eye, concept of barar, trial, test, fate, ilm of Allah, 
should be very clear in your mind, inshallah. Now, questions we have about 15 minutes. Oh, no, I just wanted to add a comment to what you just said in your last point. Uh, do not be ourselves with, uh, with Allah's divinity because that's the whole point of faith, right? Yes. Like, yes. Question, yes. Pa- Jazakallah khair. Part of the submission to admit that I am the created. He is the creator. He is the supreme power of everything beyond my imagination. And I am the humble, simple, limited part of the creation. So insisting to understand him through my limitations could be an act of arrogance and a kufur. That's why be careful. Each one of us must know his and her place when dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of respect. And by the way, we do apply this with the human beings, especially in the Arab world. You say when someone wants to say to mention a ruler, chief, officer, king, president, you say, Hadrat Fakhamat Siyadat Sa'adat Jalalat. Hey, mention it with all of these titles. But when he wanted to mention Allah, Allah bihki, Allah hiki, half Allah. But he, he wanted to mention the president or the king, he mentioned 10 titles before his name, subhanAllah. So we realize the concept of respect, we know. We do it for the human beings. But we mention Allah, Ah, ma huwa nabi haka, ma huwa Muhammad haka, Muhammad abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bayna wa bada yijib sirti al-ra'is, hadrat fakhamat siyadat sa'adat al-mubadil, subhanAllah. Subhanallah, wa kan al Okay, please, for the yes. Punishment or uplifting or cleansing. Jamil, very, very, very practical, nice, good question. He's asking the following. Many people, they go through many difficulties in their lives. How, how do they make sure or how can they know whether this is, this difficulty is just a general test or uplifting or a cleansing or punishment or whatever? Do you know my answer? What is it? In a very simple way. بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرَةٌ وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَاذِيرَةٌ Allah will make sure to let you know. <laughs> you get my point? I, 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 I will give another example. طبعا, I, I'm not saying 100%. Sometimes I might be misled because I'm ignorant. I don't have the knowledge. To, that's why I need to فَسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Generally speaking, generally, with the common sense of understanding good and bad, haram and things with the fitra, with the inner nature, most of the time we realize when it's a little bit tricky, we go and ask ulama. I will give you a simple example. <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a funny example, but just to make simple. If someone, we know, now lower your gaze against looking to the haram, for example, if women are naked in the street. Is it, uh, is it something we know that it's haram to look? If I'm driving my car and I'm looking, then I made a car accident. Is it so complicated to know that I'm punished? You got my point? Or someone has hit me with evil eye. No, I'm punished. <laughs> For example, type. Uh, another f- example, okay, I, I will be exaggerating with the example, just to make it clear. If God forbid, I'm so rude and tough with my mother. So rude and tough. Just she's calling me, Ya yeah, Amjad, come and help me, for example. You know, in anything, washing the dishes, Hey, who ma fi gherna? Ha khallaftuna mshan tuhrusu alayna, hasbi Allah, wa ni'mal wakil. Boom! And I closed the door like this. I just went through the stairs, ta 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 ta, you know? Banana, peel, I broke my back. <laughs> is it too complicated to know that I'm punished? <laughs> Seriously? Is it complicated? Imagine I'm sitting with a private jalsa with the shilla. You know shilla? The very close friends. So I'm making a gossip and then maybe against, against someone. We have an Arabic expression. You know this? This is a very, and it's, it's an amazing, powerful way 
how to justify we Arabs for ourselves to make Namima backbiting, you know, spreading rumors. We do, I don't know how we develop this, but we say, <laughs> okay, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure, but Wallahu A'lam, Wallahu Allah knows. Then we start to talk about the honor and the privacy and the same, some, some people, okay? This is something we do. But I know that this is, could be a rumor and could be a big lie. I'm destroying the reputation of someone, male or a female, just for the sake of entertaining, you know, the people. And I know I'm destroying, I'm destroying her or his reputation. Wallahi, Allah knows. For example, imagine that it happens, especially, especially this example that I will mention it, happens between these sisters. For example, when they feel jealous because she's much more beautiful and she's the first in the faculty and she was very nice mashallah very disciplined wearing the hijab straight straight a's the first in the faculty with a scholarship if another sister has nothing to do with haram and halal she feels jealous she will not say i hate her because she's smarter and more beautiful and better than she will not say this she will be sitting and i say subhanallah Allah knows how they achieve marks. I, I don't want to interfere in the business privacy, but subhanAllah, no one knows what happens in the private offices. You get my me? She's accusing her that she achieved these marks by having a bad relation with the professor, by attacking her reputation. But imagine su such things, okay? I did it, I said it, I reacted, and immediately, later on, I started having a big disaster in my life. <laughs> Punishment, fire in my house, car accident, big loss, went to the hospital, I discovered a cancer or whatever. Allah will make sure to make me aware that this is because of this. Got my point? As long as I don't have a direct feeling, direct understanding. Generally, inshallah, we do husun dhan billah. If I'm doing my best to do the best good thing, and there is no indication of any haram or harm thing I'm doing, it's inshallah, uplifting, cleansing, ajr and thawab and inshallah. If I know for sure, it's a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Father, sister, yeah. How do we contrast this with... How we, can you speak loudly? طب شيز شيز ما شاء الله the very good, good nice آية قل هل أنبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا do you want me to tell you about those who have been misled and they are misguided آه الذين يحسبون أنهم those who think that they are what doing the best okay this is preceded with stages preceded with stages like like for example we have tens of verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yudillu man yasha yudillu misguide is third or fourth or fifth step preceded by many steps yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a warning they neglect ignore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns they don't care Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds they don't care then they do khatm ala qalbih be sealed he will be he will be changed to a new phase. He will be left by his own to be his After receiving all of warnings, all of reminders, he rejected, he will be classified with a new classification. He's from the people of the fire, but now he will continue his life with more and mis, 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 misguidance. Wallillahi al-mathal al-a'la. I will give you just simple, simple example. Now, أعطيني رخصة بيتك معلش والسيارة أوكي because I'm a very visual person license please <laughs> real license driving license no 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 I, I will tell you why now because I want you to fix you know this is driving Canadian driving license 
we have the system of points here by default by default once you have the license you have points in your account for you when you make a mistake crossing the traffic lights you will lose points let's say 10 points i've lost one i received the warning be careful you have nine points left i did make another mistake flashing lights school bus i did not care i continued i lose another two points with a warning be careful you have already lost three remaining just seven i did it again lost 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 before losing the last two three big warning then i will be prohibited from driving on the roads of canada let's say for two or th three months as a kind of very then I will be given just three points. When I lose them completely, I will be completely classified as a bad citizen, not allowed to drive on the roads of Canada. Now, if, now this is my point now, if someone does not know about this procedure, he saw me just in the final stage, he came and say, actually, I'm an advocate for the human rights. I want to see you to this kind of nice, good people. Hey, Amjad. Are you allowed to drive? No, I'm not allowed to drive. <laughs> really pity. What kind of evil system in Canada is this? They are not allowing him to drive. Habibi, wait, 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 wait. Please open the full procedure and know what I have done. I'm in a new stage. Okay? This is applicable by this ayah. <laughs> Khalas. Allah will left them his Dalal, his hawa by his own, he will be prepared for Jahannam. As someone who rejected all of the warnings. Clear? All of the ayat of Idlal you must be understand under this, this concept. Or otherwise, wal'iyadu billah, wal'iyadu billah. It will be the, the core of zulm from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not the case. That's why the most important thing in understanding the Quran, to understand the Quran in light of the Quran. <laughs> yes, please. Okay, so, back to your point of like punishments and cleansing and uplifting through the hardships you go through. Um, can children go through these, like, can children be punished? No, 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 definitely, no, we are definitely not. She's asking the idea that I have explained, is it applicable on children? No, because this is applicable just on what we call in our terminology, mukallaf. Mukallaf means the one who is mature, okay, understands full reasoning power, then he will be held accountable. So before that, we, we don't call them punished or uh, part of the system. They have a completely another consideration. Type. I have, I think, two minutes just for the Adhan. Yes, brother. I just want to follow up on the question of the sister about the uh, Quran. Amala. It cannot be read without the next verse. Mm. الذين ضل سعيهم فلا يهتدون يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا ولذلك الذي كفروا أعمام زاك الله خير. Are you aware what he said? الذين كفروا. I mean, they have already taken a stance. They rejected the آخرة from the very beginning. So they don't want. They have a they they have an action and reaction towards something. It was they were exposed to this. I don't want. Okay, think about it. I don't care. Be careful. There's a possibility. No, 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 I don't care. Go to hell, you and your God and your religion. I don't care. Let, uh, you, your, you, your, your God, let me see this God, what will do you. So he took a decision. So face the consequences. It's like Sheikh Ali Tantawi. Zakallah khair, brother. Barakallah fiqh. You know, like Sheikh Ali Tantawi. And let me finish by this. Zakallah khair. Ali Tantawi. And I always repeat it many times. Please go and read his book. Ta'rif Am Bidin al-Islam. General Introduction to Islam. One of the greatest books in Islam. 100, 120 pages, translated into English by a Muslim revert, American. It's amazing book, amazing, about Islamic faith in a very simple way. He says, imagine if someone is walking in a, like a big, you know, piece of land, big desert. Out of a sudden, just he saw a sign, 
reads, be careful a very dangerous mind feels. حق الألغام. As someone with simple intellect, what should you do? Don't go there. No, imagine that you are a skeptic and you don't believe in the sign. <laughs> At least if you have the minimum of logic, does it deserve for you to try to check if it's true or not? If you just decided, no, 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 it's a lie. Yeah, I mean, what if it's not a lie? There is a minefield. <laughs> Full of explosives. It will kill you. It will cause you harm. No, 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 no. I don't believe in that. Yeah, I mean, what if? Bas, bas. What if? How can you reject something you have no idea about it? In itself, this rejection is an arrogance. Be humble just to check. Got my point? It's like this. When I reject something, I have no access. I have no idea. In itself, it's an act of arrogance. The fact that I don't care. It's like me, if someone told me, I'm just be careful. Don't go from this door because there is a very dangerous dog outside. No, 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 there is no dog. Please be careful, there's a dog. No, 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 there's no dog. What if? Try to look to the CCTV cameras, ask someone from inside the house, try to check, look from the window. No, no, I don't care. I will not check. I will not ask. And there is no dog. This is what? Either ignorance with arrogance or arrogance with ignorance or pure stupidity with arrogance. Well, lie. This is, this is my action because simply, simply, I will do it if I'm a crazy. Yes. You will understand if I do it, you say, hey, is he crazy? This is what you say. Because if I'm not crazy, I'm not supposed to do this. Just check. Then I discovered he's lying. But I did my job. But just to deny the existence of a dangerous animal. Because I think there is no. Because this is what I decided. It's a big mistake. Thank you very much. See you next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.